All right, now, Craig, the deep state, <clears throat> the term deep state is really a term that became prevalent this year. Everyone in the country has heard about it. I have your book yes. here in front of me. It's outstanding. I began reading it a couple of days ago. Great stuff. I want to read something from the book that jumped right out at me. It's on page 13, right in the beginning of the book. You wrote, today the deep state has become a pervasive and threatening reality in the United States. It has harnessed the power of the bureaucratic state and it has used corruption and massive amounts of money to control technology, media, and other powerful tools to impose its own agenda. It's fooling many Americans into believing in an ideology that pretends to be pro-freedom and pro-equality. In reality, deep state ideology is anti-liberty, anti-progress, anti-religious freedom, and anti-American. Explain that, please, Craig. Absolutely. You see, there was so much confusion. When I was going across the United States and speaking uh, to groups, they knew something about the deep state, but they didn't really know how pervasive it was. And the root of the deep state is this. Number one, it's the traditional bureaucrats who think they can control and manipulate, because in a bureaucracy, there's two things. One is to expand your, your money and expand your power, and number two, to protect yourself. But the second part is the ideology. What President Obama had brought into the bureaucracy were ideologically driven people who wanted to transform America into a socialist society. And that is the difference. And so with that, we're finding that the deep state is at war with liberty. And it's the bureaucratic administrative state that's a threat to individual freedom. You know, Craig, I try to explain this to people. And what I really enjoy about the book is, is the common sense explanations within. I try to explain to people that the deep state isn't something you would see on the X-Files, that old television show, a dimly lit right. conference room with high back chairs and cigar smoke. It's just institutional bureaucrats who don't want things to change. They want their consultant buddies and their lobbyist buddies to keep getting that money. They want the status quo and they're threatened by anyone who challenges that. That's really the As essence of what it is, isn't it? That, that's the essence. See, the, the, the problem we have, government is so big, and it wants to keep getting bigger. And these bureaucrats, they may be in charge of departments or administrative tasks that are no longer needed, that are a waste of money, that are a duplication. But a bureaucracy continues on and on and on, always wanting to grow and protect itself. That is one of the enemies, because they see the policies of President Trump the policies that have come out of, of Congress that is disrupting the bureaucracy. It's deregulation. That takes away uh, their jobs. That takes away their, their influence, their power. They, they see downsizing of, of the government as the enemy, and they got to fight back. And then when you add the ideology of all the Obama appointees, where you have uh, in the EPA for itself, at least one third of those people in the EPA is an army of resistance against change and against the abuse of power that's by the EPA. And they're fighting an ideological war along with the bureaucrats that are fighting to protect themselves. All right, I want to play you a piece of uh, video from Senator Rand Paul. Let's listen to this, Senator Rand Paul from the Senate floor this week. In those days, the power to do intelligence was some guy sneaking in your house and placing a little magnet on your phone. It's not done that way anymore now. They can scoop up every phone call in America like that. They can scoop up every international phone call, every phone call to a country. We can listen to what anybody is saying anywhere around the globe anytime we want, and then we can kill anyone, anytime, anywhere in the world. These are ominous powers and deserve more oversight. Now, Craig, Senator Paul is talking about killing people outside the U.S. that we deem to be enemies yes. of our country. But what he's really talking about is how powerful government can be. He sounds almost like President Eisenhower did back in 61 when he warned about the powers of the military industrial complex. So how does government balance the good they're doing to protect us against these vast, dangerous overreaches? Well, that's the power we have. See, Senator Rand Paul, he, he's so right about the fact that there is an abuse of power that's gone on, uh, and they have the power. You, you have uh, agencies, 18 agencies, that are able 
to uh, uh, cause great harm, not only overseas, but to America. And we saw that with the FISA abuse that has taken place under the Obama administration. We see that we have the FBI, the CIA, we have these intelligence agencies that are actually all of a sudden becoming uh, enemies of liberty, enemies of the people in the sense that they are abusing their power. And, and the only way to stop this is to be able to put more restrictions on the ability of the bureaucrats to abuse their power. Again, the book is The Deep State, 15, 15 Surprising Dangers You Should Know. Craig Huey is the author. Craig, this is a great read. I highly recommend it. Thanks very, very much. Thank you, John. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more breaking news coverage, exclusive interviews, and great videos, click over here to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And don't forget to download the free Newsmax TV app. Newsmax TV, it's real news for real people.